Alright guys, welcome back to another PS4 tutorial. So in this video, I'm going to be covering the Homebrew Store, which is a new app, a new homebrew application that's been released. Um, it's probably, in my, at least in my view, it's the most significant homebrew application that's been released for the PS4 this far. Uh, we've had, you know, the Remote Package Installer, which is really useful, and we've had PS4 Explorer. Uh, which are both great useful homebrew apps. I put those in second and third place, but number one right now is this uh, homebrew store, which is essentially like the homebrew app store for the Nintendo Switch, if you've been following my Switch tutorials. It's basically that, but for the PS4. And it is in an alpha stage, so it's, um, you know, it's, it's not feature complete yet. Take that as you will, but you can definitely see the potential for this uh, in future versions, and it can be used uh, right here right now with the alpha version so I'm going to show you guys how to install it then I'm going to show you how to use it and then I'm going to give you guys kind of my final opinions on what this could could potentially be in the not too distant future and what uh, you know what you could really do with it so so going over to the computer here you've got the package file that you can download I'll put a link in the description of course and you just want to copy that over to a USB stick or use the remote package installer to install it so I'm just going to copy this over to my USB stick and make sure the USB stick is either formatted in XFAT or FAT32 format. If, you, if it's not, you can just right click on the USB drive and go to format and then select XFAT or FAT32 to format it and make sure that package file is on the root of the drive and not in any folders. So now we're going to unplug our USB, plug it back into the PS4. So we're going to head over to our exploit page, head to 5.05 and run the homebrew enabler, uh, I recommend version 1.8. I'm not sure if that's exactly required, if it has to be version 1.8, but we'll go with version 1.8 anyway. I don't think that's working. I think that error code caused some issues. Let's try that again. Hen 1.8, 5.05, there we go. So we're gonna run uh, the homebrew enabler as always to allow us to run the application and access the debug settings. So then we're going to go to the settings, we're going to go down to debug settings, and then we're going to go to game, package installer, and install the store.package file. And of course you could do this quicker if you use the um, remote package installer. And there we go, we now have the homebrew store available to run. So you just launch it, takes a few seconds to load up. So this is another really cool thing about uh, the homebrew store is the fact that it allows you to do updates from within the application itself. So the whole application can basically update itself. So rather than having to download a new version, which is something I always kind of hated is when, you know, you install a homebrew application and then, you know, the next day the developer says, hey, there's a new version, guys, and you have to re-download it and reinstall it. Uh, whereas with this, it basically updates itself. So when you go on it, if there is an update available, you'll get this uh, message and then you just say okay. And then it basically updates the application by itself. And then, yeah, it will launch the application once it's finished doing its updates. And there we go, that's it. And then you'll land on the home page right here. And as you can see, there's eight separate apps that you can select. You use the D-pad to select them. You can use the D-pad to go down below the bottom row and that'll take you to the next page. So there's multiple pages of uh, different applications, homebrew apps, uh, emulators, you've even got uh, modifications for games like the developer menus for Dying Light and the Dead Island series, all of that stuff. You could even have custom themes on here. Basically anything that's a package file, uh, that's a fake package file, you could uh, put on here. So we head back to page one. To actually download an app, you just uh, press X on it. So we'll download Amazon Prime Video. And it gives you some nice information about it, tells you what the app is, who made it, what the title ID is, uh, even a little description saying it's a patched Amazon Prime video, aka no PSN required. Even gives you the file size, the version, and it tells you if it's playable on your firmware. So all of that is uh, pretty useful. And then you just press X to download. And there it goes, it starts downloading the app and then it'll give you a little confirmation thing saying it's been added to the background. Just click OK and it'll, add, it'll be added to downloads and then you'll get another notification a little while later saying that it's ready to use. And then you can press square also to uninstall apps as well. So you can uninstall them uh, and uh, install them from here. And then you press circle to go back. 
So there we go, that's ready to use. And then let's also download PS4 Player. This is another homebrew application I need to make a video on, but I'm probably gonna wait until it's a bit more feature complete uh, once there's been a few more updates for it. I had to cover the homebrew store as uh, soon as it came out basically because it is, uh, it is pretty much a game changer. Okay, and there we go, that's PS4 Player downloaded. We can press circle to go back. And then you basically just press the middle button and there's your applications. PS4 player still installing, but there we go, ready to use. I'm not gonna run Amazon Prime Video because that'll enable DHCP, which will stop my capture card from recording it. But I can launch PS4 player just to show that, uh, you know, these apps that are installed via the homebrew store do indeed work absolutely fine. PS4 player, and there we go, PS4 player is running no problem at all. So yeah, the homebrew store, absolutely amazing. So a few other things in here, there's different settings that you can customize as well. So if you press the triangle button, it'll take you into the settings. And from here, you can change the temporary path, uh, which is kind of like the, the path where your applications that you're downloading first get stored. I guess it's kind of like your download directory because the, the apps have to be downloaded to that directory first and then installed from there. And then once they're installed, they can be removed uh, from that temporary directory. So you can change that. I think you can actually change it to the USB as well. So you can have your temporary directory on a USB stick. You can also change the background image and the CDN URL, which is the content uh, delivery network which is essentially the server address for where all of these package files are being served from. So as you can see, it's uh, somewhere on dark software, but other websites can host their own uh, CDNs and you can change this URL to their CDN address and then you're good. It will start using that one instead. Uh, you can even make your own custom ones on a local server if you just wanna serve your package files straight to your um, system. I might cover that actually in another video. And, uh, oh, wow, there you go, they just fixed that. <laughs> they just fixed that in that update that I just did. Uh, there used to be a problem where if you opened the settings, you weren't able to close it because pressing circle wouldn't close it. It would just like load another page and it would keep the settings menu up. But now you can uh, press circle and it closes like it should, showing that those automatic updates are working. Also, there's a settings.ini file, as you can see here, it says it's loaded from app settings.ini. So in that same, I think it's in the same path, in the temporary path, so user app, there is a settings.ini file, which is the configuration file, which you could access through FTP if you want to modify it and change the settings. Uh, so you can change the settings that way as well. So yeah, there you go. That is basically the Homebrew App Store. Now there are a few things I want to kind of uh, talk about here just because of the potential of this. So one of them is if you take the bottom bar and I'm just like speculating for you know the future here, but if you take that bar that's at the bottom of the screen and have a similar bar at the top of the screen for different categories, so it's like tabs, you could use R1 and L1 to scroll between the different tabs. I'm basically pitching this to lightning mods here at this point. And then uh, you essentially have different categories for homebrew, custom themes, media, um, you know, emulators, and all that kind of stuff. Maybe even fake package updates or retail updates, although there'll probably be some legal issues with that, so they may not include that kind of content. But, you know, just something to think about that would be useful in a future version. So you could see this being used to basically download pretty much the majority of applications that you might want in the future. Another thing that I think would be awesome as well is if it could also be used to inject payloads. So you, as well as having all of these package files that you can download, you could have a separate uh, section for different payloads that you could inject from the homebrew application as well from the homebrew store. So you could have all of your GTA mod menu payloads and the Uncharted debug menu, the Last of Us debug menus, WebRTE, you know, and all of your other kind of main payloads you could have also on this store that you could inject because I have seen other homebrew applications, their sole purpose is to inject a payload. Like there's a, there's a payload loader uh, application which allows you to inject a payload from your computer without using the WebKit. And there's also one called WebRTE a separate homebrew application just for installing WebRTE. So yeah, it looks like it could be possible to include something like that. So that's the kind of thing that we might be able to hopefully see in the future. 
and uh, maybe a slightly updated UI. But hey, as it is right now, it's still amazing. And uh, I really look forward to seeing where this goes in the future. So I'm sure a lot of people will ask, will there be games on here? So you can install fake package games, entire games, using the homebrew store. That's not what I believe this is uh, really meant for. So I don't think the, you know, the dark software CDN will be hosting uh, full on fake package games at any point, but maybe some other site might, in which case you could just change the CDN URL to that website and then you'll be able to download, you know, fake package games and updates. There may also be some kind of limitation added so you can't download package files that are too large. You know, that, that might be some kind of limitation that they've put in the code to prevent people from doing that, but who knows. Anyway, that's it for now, guys. Awesome homebrew. Huge props to Lightning Mods and the rest of the team for developing this and uh, putting all the work in because I'm sure it must have been excruciating and probably took a hell of a long time. So yeah, huge th shout out to you guys. And uh, yeah, so if you liked the video or you found the information useful, please leave a like and subscribe. Download link to the homebrew store will be in the description. And I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.